Hey guys, welcome back to Scarlet Sprites. Today's video is one that I've thought about a few times in the past, but never really brought together. It's an obscure device for an obscure format, at least here in the United States. This is the PlayStation VCD adapter. So let's start with an origin story here. Back in the late 90s when I was in college, I discovered that aside from hosting apps and games on FTP sites, a few were actually hosting movies. Movies of films that were currently in theaters. Again, bear with me here, this was 1998, so we're talking 20 plus years ago. So yeah, this was pretty exciting stuff for the time, also illegal. You basically downloaded a bunch of rare files that unpack to a bin and queue file for burning to a CDR. The result of that burn was then, you guessed it, a VCD formatted disc containing a pirated movie in most cases. Now it's important to note that while I discovered the dark side of VCDs first, this was actually a legitimate format used in China and some other parts of the world outside of North America. I'm assuming that like me, most of you probably grew up with the VHS tape as the go-to format for watching films. Well, a commercially produced VCD is usually touted as having similar quality to that of a movie on VHS, but from what I have experienced firsthand, that's a bit of a stretch in my opinion. The first time I ever viewed a commercially produced VCD was when I bought the Star Wars trilogy in college. Yes, during the long-awaited drought of hoping for Star Wars to come to DVD, it was actually already available on VCD. I've unfortunately since sold this set off, so I can't show footage from the discs, but overall the video quality was blocky and the colors were really drab. The audio was okay, but nothing to write home about. In short, I much preferred my widescreen VHS tapes at the time. Given that description and the time period, you won't be surprised to learn that VCDs are pretty low res, 352 by 240 for NTSC, and they are encoded with one of the OGs of compression, MPEG-1. Audio is also MPEG-1, layer two, not MP3, and is encoded at 224 kilobits per second. So yes, given all of that, it's not overly pretty by today's disc standards. Oh, and one more thing, each disc holds just 80 minutes worth of video, so for almost every movie, you're going to need to get up and switch discs about halfway through. So to bring this back around, at the time, I'm a college student who has access to in-theater movies in my dorm room. Now, was this better than going to the theater? Hell no, at least not from an optimal viewing experience, but it was really cool to be able to have get-togethers in the dorm and haphazardly watch some new movies and invite people over and enjoy bootlegging in the late 90s. The only issue was without some type of external player to output to a TV, you'd be stuck having everyone crowd around someone's computer screen, which was not ideal at all. That's when I discovered this little piece of heaven, an add-on card for the then popular Sony PlayStation that allowed it to run all of our pirated movies. And when I say our pirated movies, I mean other people. I can't believe I even still have the box for this. Well, yeah, I can, I save everything. This isn't half bad save for the terrible English writing, which honestly just makes me love this all the more. The box is of a thicker cardboard and it has a decent piece of plastic inside to hold and support the VCD card. And wow, an instruction booklet. Can you guys believe that? A questionable piece of Chinese hardware used for playing VCDs on a PlayStation managed to come with an instruction booklet. Flash forward 20 years and you're lucky if you can get that from a major developer with a $60 new release. So this is pretty simple. You can see how it plugs directly into the IO and AV ports on the back of the PlayStation. There's no need for additional power. There is a switch on the top right here that you use to indicate whether you're loading a VCD movie or booting a game. So I'm going to change that to VCD and pop in my legally purchased copy of the score. And well, that's not good. I tried reseeding this a few more times and I simply cannot get the movie to boot 
tried some PlayStation backups that would load and play fine. So I know my mod chip is still good to go. And with that knowledge, tried running a VCD sample disc that I burned. No dice there either. Not getting any picture from an officially pressed silver disc or a CDR. Well, this is a real bummer because I wanted to show this working, obviously. It really was a pretty decent accessory back in the day and one that I got a lot of miles out of. I suppose given that fact, it isn't terribly surprising that this may just be dead. The good news here is that some DVD players were also capable of running this format as well as SVCDs, which was the successor format to VCD. And I happen to still have an old Apex VHS DVD combo player that should load this disc. Well, as you can see, we've come a long way from the VCD to the Blu-ray and 4K discs of today. I'd really argue that due to the blockiness and sometimes running colors, these are marginally worse than VHS tapes despite comparisons of the two formats. So overall, I hope you found this somewhat interesting. Really bummed that it doesn't work. It's a format that doesn't really get discussed too much anymore for obvious reasons. And the PlayStation VCD player is pretty niche. I don't think I've ever met anyone else who had one or used one. I'm bummed that it's broke, but I think you guys still picked up on the spirit of how this used to work and factor into college life. It's not overly complicated by any stretch. So thanks so much for stopping by today and hanging out. Go ahead and like the video if you feel so inclined. Subscribe if you want to stick around for more, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.